So over here we have the Montan, which is a triple cream. Okay. So it's going to be very creamy, so you're going to need a, a nice acidity in the wine, so we're going to actually do champagne Okay. to go with that one. So. Some Rotorer. They don't play here. <laughs> you can go ahead and cut right into it and see how it tastes. Okay. Now, champagne. a lot of people also will always ask me, are you supposed to eat the rind on a cheese? And, you know, I usually eat the rind on most cheeses. Is there a rule of thumb that, that you eat it on some, you don't eat it on the other? Um, I, it's all personal preference. I mean, the funny thing is our, when our wine director, he says, real men eat the cheese with the rind. <laughs> that's, okay. it, that's, what he comes that's it. That's what I do. I'm a real man <laughs> when it comes to eating cheese. But, I mean, some of them, I mean, like the Stilton, I don't know. I mean, I, I tend to pick that off. But, like, the, the nice bloomy rinds right. are actually good. There you go. The rind, you know, I'll, I'll yep. we can do it together. Yeah, we'll do it together. Okay, remember this goes with champagne. Cheers. Mm. I'm sorry, we ate it before Robert got catch. <laughs> <Couldn't wait. laughs> it smell good. It's really good. Yeah, it's very mild. Well, maybe after that last cheese, everything yeah. tastes mild to me. <laughs> I didn't do that one. But then um, the acidity of the champagne. Cheers. 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 Welcome to Las Vegas. Yes. Wow, that's a really good champagne too. Yeah. They work well together. Yeah, that's dynamite. Definitely better than what you eat at the, on the road most oh, days. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You're taking in taste buds I didn't know existed. And usually, I'm usually drinking from a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. Okay, but this so is good. Let's um, let's give him one more that you think is really gonna. He didn't have the guts to try that one. So, mm. what about the? Let's go to a plus. Yeah, let's try the plus because that's a good. And that one. That's a fun, fun cheese. Yeah, oh, yeah. it. Um, they actually wash it with brandy, and that's what gives it like the outside color. Does he need anything else on this, or you recommend no, you just, just go straight? straight? Just go straight. Do it up straight. Straight up. And let, let everyone know exactly what you're feeling and tasting and smelling <laughs> while you do it. Really soft. It took a little bit for the flavor to kick in. Right. For the flavor to kick in. <laughs> Actually, that should, usually in France, they keep that almost in the windowsill with a loaf of baguette. So it's warm mm. and it's almost like, a, like you say, like a dip. And they just keep it there. Yeah, and they'll eat it throughout the day. And that's why they have it in this uh, container right here. Mm. The, the wooden. They keep it right in there. Oh. And these are you good stories to know. Like, you know, they keep it in the windowsill, so when you have that, you tell your friends. Another cheese you don't have out here right now is Mobier, but that's got a great story behind oh, it yeah. because they put the ash down between the two milkings of exactly. the cows. And, oh, really? You know, yeah, it's, um, again, we don't have some. Maybe we'll sneak some out for you a little later, but it's made um, on very small farms in France where they usually will milk the cows in the morning, and then they will they'll put the milk out in the, in the cheese rind, I guess you would say, and then they don't have enough milk to finish the cheese. So, so they didn't have refrigeration in the old days. They didn't want the flies landing on it, so they would put ash over it, and that would keep the flies off. They'd take the cows up, they'd graze them all day, and then they'd come back, the cows would build up a little more milk, they'd milk them, they'd put it on top of the ash. The ash. And then when you eat it now, after all the aging process, you can see they're two slightly different colors with this layer of ash in between. Wow. So if you ever really want to impress a chick or something with your knowledge of cheese, definitely order a Mobier and, and tell them that story. Any other great stories? Just did we give one um, good... Why does that one look like a human brain? <laughs> I don't know. Is it's there anything a, in particular that makes it do that? <laughs> I put it out there for a good uh, con conversational speed, um, but uh, yeah, it's just from the from the bloomingness or the, or the aging of the cheese, it just develops like that. Hmm. So, how long does it take to make one of these cheeses in general? Uh, it all depends. Like this one over here is aged for almost anywhere between eighteen and twenty-four months. Wow! But like some of your fresher ones, like the Mount Tam, those are those are only aged about three or four weeks. And we have some quality cheeses here in the yeah. U.S. Are there, is there anything on this table right now that if somebody were to go into their local gourmet food store, uh, not, not um, necessarily a gourmet cheese store, but, you know, a local... Uh, your Whole Foods yeah. will have, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say all, all of these, but I'm going to say they're going to have a good number of them. They're going to have the Hooks. They're going to have the Mimolette. They're definitely going to have the Stilton. Um, yeah, that's a... Is the Hooks probably the oldest one here? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. There, that's ten obviously ten years aged. Yeah. 
Well, there we go, a little basics on cheese. We're gonna stick around here. We might eat some other stuff, I'm not sure, but um, for now, that's what you got on cheese. Okay, we're back. I'm sorry, man. I just couldn't get out of this place without doing some oysters. Chef's been kind enough to bring over some, some great oysters here. I want to clarify, this is also something, though, I like to explain to people because a lot of confusion out there about oysters. Uh, people don't understand and A lot of cool facts about them. Number one, um, first, how many varieties do you have here at Morel's right now? Uh, right now we're doing a oyster palooza, actually, for these two months of uh, April and May. So we're, we have seven right now. Usually we go for anywhere between four and five. Usually three east coast and three west coast. As I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, there are really, genetically speaking, only four or five varieties of oysters scientifically. Yeah. But the reason you'll see you know, dozens of different types of oysters listed is because they get their name and they get their taste from the waters in which they're, they're grown, basically. I mean, oysters, all they do all day is suck in water and shoot out water and suck in water. So what the water tastes like is really what the oyster's gonna taste like. Is that exactly. correct? Yep. And th because of that fact, actually, these are an incredibly environmentally friendly food to eat. I mean, you talk about sustainability. When, when people farm oysters in a bed of water, it really cleans that water, right? Exactly. So they're like almost like mini filters. And chef, one really important quick question for you. There's an old, I guess, wives' tale or an old saying, you only have oysters in months with an R in them. And if you actually look at your calendar, months with an R in them are, are your fall, your winter, and your spring months. Months without an R are the summer. So I had always, I guess, thought that because of the summer, the water got warmer, the oysters could go bad or get bacteria. But these days, I mean, you're having an oyster palooza that goes into May, no R. Yeah. Is it safe now to eat oysters all year round? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, usually it was said that because they were spawning at the time, so that's why they don't do it. But like you say, it's nothing to do with the water because usually uh, any of, like, like you mentioned, the Kumamoto's, they're, they're uh, held way way below the surface you know like maybe like a thousand feet down you know so it's nothing about the water temperature or nothing well, so we can pretty much eat these oh, all year yeah, round all year round okay awesome. good to know yeah. so what are we looking at here over here we have the blue point oyster which is an east coast oyster the other thing i've noticed is that east coast oysters are more flat and round where the west coast ones this was a fanny bay and like you say fanny, fanny bays in british columbia vancouver and that's where they get their name and then uh, right here is a small one, is a cushy oyster. And as you see, they're more of like deep, right. they're where these are all mostly flat. Now, cushies are very similar to me, looks wise, to Kumamoto, exactly. which are a Japanese oyster. Yeah. Um, five years ago, I never heard of cushy oysters. I mean, it really is there some guy out there pimping cushy oysters <laughs> right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like you say, it's just the, the different waters, and plus, whatever's in the water, they could grow different with the shell. So that's basically what it is, is just the varietal of where they f get them out of the water. Okay, so I know you said you're not a huge oyster fan, but you're going you're gonna to have to try oh, some uh, with yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. What's a good oyster for a beginner that he should try, and the best way that, you say you want it with hot sauce, right? Yeah, well, I know some sort of Tabasco or something. Yeah, we have Tabasco, yeah, yeah. we have a fresh grated horseradish, and a mignette, which is a classical French uh, vinegar with the cracked black pepper and shallots in there. And once again, is there a proper way that you should eat it? It's all personal fork, preference. Take it right off the shell, or you could take it right off the shell if you'd like. Either or, if you're in a really lemon. nice restaurant, sometimes I don't like to eat it right off the shell because I'm very sloppy. It gets right. in my beard. I'm right. turning, and people are getting it's messy. So you, that's why you have these dainty little girly forks that you Perfect. could use if you want to do it that way. So um, I have one. There's some yeah, mignonette if you want to try it, or he can toss you some Tabasco. Yeah. And you want a big? What do you want to start with? Something small and dainty, or something yeah, big well, and? Yeah, so I'll start with something small. Okay. And, uh, and what, what would this one be? That's the kushi. So what you want to do is you want to just double check that it's taken off of the shell because there's a little attachment. Mm -hmm. So just double check it's taken off. They're semi attached. And then I'm working at it. He's getting it. I'm working at it. We're, we're attached. There you go. You got him. Okay. Yeah. So then you could either flavor it how you like, like you say, a little Tabasco. A little tabasco. I like to do a little mignette, just a little bit. I'll stick with the kushi with you guys. I'll go oh. with the mignonette as well. <laughs> and then you can see, like when when we opened these, they were all dry, and then once the air hits it, is when the water starts coming really? out of them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
<laughs> and it's polite to just suck down that extra water, if you want, right? <laughs> Good? Awesome. And what would, what are we drinking with the oysters? What do you recommend for people most of the time? Uh, mostly white wine it goes very well. Right here we have the champagne, we have a Chablis, and a, a Sauvignon Blanc. Well, there you go, guys. We learned a little bit about oysters, we learned a little bit about cheese. Chef, thank you so much. No we appreciate Anytime. your time. Morel's here in Las Vegas, one of the best places for both oysters and cheese. And, of course, Mushroom Head, one of the best bands out there <laughs> playing hard rock. So you're out on the road through? June 11 right now, and probably... Probably still growing, but yeah, the tour is yeah. about nine weeks long. As soon as the tour is over, you're coming back. We're going to sit down and have a full dinner. That'd be great. great. And you awesome. know, if you want to go see a show tonight, yeah, you I'm sure you can out, get some I'll tickets. Put you on the list. Absolutely, <laughs> sounds great. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Have a Thank good one. You. Cheers.